Next on The Dialogue, we meet the Princess of Jordan, striving to make sure world-class cancer care is available for all. I will continue to break the taboos that surround cancer and mental illness and be, hopefully, a source of strength to cancer patients. I am Rida Talal and I'm the chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation and Centre. Her Royal Highness has been internationally recognised for her humanitarian work. The greatest recognition I have ever received has been from the countless cancer patients who have become my large family. Your Royal Highness, thank you so much for joining us on The Dialogue. Now, you started your career as a journalist, didn't you? What, what, what was it that first attracted you, drew you to the, the world of news? I was born and raised in Lebanon to a political family. And as a teenager, I witnessed the outbreak of the Lebanese Civil War. And after that, I attended Georgetown University's School of Foreign Service while I was studying in the United States. I noticed a clear bias in the Western media towards our part of the world. And this is when I decided to immerse myself in a journalism career to contribute in changing the negative perception. And then in 2001, you were appointed as the chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation and the center. And I believe that cancer in the region has had a, a stigma to it. King Abdullah appointed me as the chairperson of the King Hussein Cancer Foundation and Center. And I proceeded to establish it with the immense support of the King and Queen Rania. At the time, the landscape for cancer was extremely bleak in Jordan and throughout the region. Everybody still equated cancer with death and there were no um, options. It was imperative to establish a center that would treat patients with advanced care. But before that, there were still many stigmas and taboos associated with the disease. And the person who helped us most in starting to break these taboos was King Hussein himself. He was himself fighting his own cancer battle privately, but he decided to take that battle to the public. He famously removed the traditional headscarf from his head to show his bare head, to show that there was no shame in getting cancer. Wow, very powerful. It's hard not to be moved and inspired when you meet people and listen to the many stories that, that there are around this, this centre. And this is work that has real personal significance for you, isn't it? My husband, Prince Talal, was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma at the age of 26. And overnight, we were plunged into the horrifying reality of cancer. As Prince Talal was undergoing his treatment in one of the leading cancer centres in the United States, I couldn't but think and even be haunted by images of countless women in the Arab world who were going through the same ordeal as I was, but did not have any options for travel to treat their loved ones. And this is when I resolved that this reality was going to change. And there is optimism. We spoke off camera about some of the successes that there, there have been. Would, could you tell us about some of that success? The KCC is a cornerstone. It addresses all the needs of cancer patients. It has so far treated over 75,000 patients from all over the Arab world. One of the greatest successes that I'm most proud of is with regards to breast cancer and with early screening and detection. We have managed through the Jordan Breast Cancer Program to flip the statistics for women 
um, being diagnosed with cancer at the late stages of their disease, from 70% to 30%. However, this is still not enough. We will not rest until not one woman has to succumb to cancer because of a late diagnosis. Amazing. Dealing with cancer is difficult enough, let alone trying to do it when you've been displaced from your home country. Working to help refugees is an important part of, of what you've been doing, isn't it? You know, Guy, Jordan is a country surrounded by countries in conflict. And where there is conflict, there are refugees. And Jordan has been host to over a million refugees and displaced people. They literally fall within the cracks. And this is when the King Hussein Cancer Foundation took a humanitarian step and set up goodwill funds to treat the underprivileged, the refugees, and the displaced people. And so far, the, uh, our goodwill funds have treated 3,500 refugees. And this is why it is truly imperative on the international community to step up and increase its support because we simply cannot keep on shouldering that burden on our own. So this is our playroom for young patients. Your Highness, we've got this amazing kids' playroom here at the centre, but you've also got the healing garden too, both spaces that I guess allow people to be themselves, to, uh, to escape a little bit. And mental health is a really important part of this holistic healing process, isn't it? Mental health is of paramount importance to me personally. There are too many taboos surrounding it still and we will do everything in our power to make them know that they can overcome their cancer and that they can have the treatment in an uplifting, happy place. You yourself have been the recipient of many awards. You've been honoured for your humanitarian work. Is there anything you still feel that you're yet to achieve? It is always an honour to receive an award for one's work. I have to tell you that the greatest honour and award for me is to have had the opportunity to be by the side of cancer patients and their families and hopefully always be a source of strength to cancer patients and their families. A source of strength to patients throughout the Arab world and beyond. Your Highness, thank you so much for joining us on the dialogue. Thank you. Thank you. Guys.